Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to some more StarCraft 2. Today I'm going to be answering a question that I've been getting a lot over the last year and a half to two years or whatever it is. Um, at some point I uploaded a video on this very YouTube channel called the Easy Zerg Build Order. And this is still a build order that I advise a lot of people to be playing. And I also, you know, basically help the people that I coach um, with this build order. So I try and have them execute this one perfectly. Because honestly, if you manage to do it perfectly, you will not be hanging around in any of the lower leagues for very long because the build is very very solid and the question that I get every single time is yeah this build works right now but how does it do at higher level I mean I see nobody play Roach Hydra versus Terran right like how does this build order do at one of the higher leagues so this is currently being played right here well it's not currently being played this one was played a couple of days ago in Heart of the Swarm uh, I'm currently hovering right around rank 2 Master League although I don't know exactly where I was at when playing this game somewhere around the higher Master League region um, and I'm up against a guy named Loquire right there, um, and this was indeed played on the live stream. So in this specific game, I'm going to be going for that exact build that I've been, you know, basically teaching people for a very long time. And I'm going to try and make it work versus this higher level Terran player. Now, most of the time, if you watch Zerg vs. Terran at the highest level of play, especially at like the pro gamer level, you will never really see them play Roach Hydra for one simple reason. Roach Hydra is great when you are playing early to mid game, but once it gets to the later part of the game, so, you know, when Terran gets like plus three plus three on their bio, or when they just get too many bases going, Roach Hydra just simply falls off. If you get to that point in the game, when you are playing Roach Hydra, there's a very big chance that you will end up losing it. However, early on, and especially like towards the middle part of the game, you can easily do this build at the highest levels of play for sure as well. The only problem is really that you, you know, you're going to be a little bit weaker against drops and whatnot, but you can definitely hold your own. And I do play this um, this build like every now and then. I don't play it too often. I do try and make my standard be the Mutaling Bane stuff because I've been practicing that for so long. Uh, but Roach Hydra is definitely viable at one of the higher levels of play as well. So here's the thing about Roach Hydra. Roach Hydra, by the way, is raining like mad outside right now. So if you hear any kind of tickling, that is going to be it. Um, but um, Roach Hydra is great for the fact that it doesn't really require very much micro at all. Roach Hydra basically allows you to, you know, just a move and then go back to macroing. You don't need to worry about rolling in your Banelings into Widow Mines. You don't have to manually control your Zerklings to blow up Widow Mines. You don't have to manually, you know, have your Mutalisk snipe down Metavex and all that sort of stuff. You basically just have one big control group. And you A-move towards the other side of the map when your upgrades finish up. That is the general approach in these kind of games. Now, obviously, because I'm up against a pretty high-level Terran here, I do need to micro a little bit fancier. But at the very least, that is the advantage of playing these sort of styles. So if you are currently um, anywhere below, like, you know, probably below, like, Diamond... Uh, so any of the lower leagues below that, I would highly recommend giving this build a try. So basically, what is the build that I'm actually talking about right here? So basically, what this is all about, we're going to be opening up Gasless um, until about the 5 minute mark, at which point I will start my double gases up. We're going to go for 4 queens, make sure that we get um, the lair going, get the evo chambers going, get the plus 1 missile and the armor upgrade, and then eventually... We're going to be getting a um, Roach Warren, get the Roach Speed, and then you do a big push out. Right one plus one plus one, and Roach Speed finish up. And if you do the build order correctly, plus one plus one and Roach Speed will finish up roughly around the same time. So you can be producing a lot of Roaches, and basically throw them in the Terran's face. Now there's a couple of reasons why this build is so good against Terran. Um, especially early on. First off, most Terran players, you know, they don't expect this whatsoever. I mean, they're basically not expecting a Zerg to move out until at least like a little little while later into the game. And most of the Terran players that I do try this build against um, will already have things like missile turrets and whatnot up because they're never assuming that you're going to play Roach Hydra. Uh, so that's the first thing. But on top of that, Roaches with upgrades are actually really, really, really good against Bio once again until plus three plus three is done. So I do know for a fact that if I'm going to be playing this style, which is indeed what I'm doing, I need to make sure that, you know, I kill him before that point in the game. I mean, if I let my opponent get all the way up to plus three, plus three and like four bases, I know for a fact that it's going to be very difficult. However, if I manage to do damage before that and significant amounts of it, I will have a pretty easy time. So you can see my lair already go down. I did go for the double gases, like I mentioned. Uh, my execution in this specific game is actually not perfect. My opponent is being very annoying with the Reapers early on. And, um, you know, I'm just making some minor mistakes. But um, in the end, I do end up getting the plus one, plus one. I 
will end up getting the road speed as well. And you can see my opponent still being annoying, knowing that I skipped out the early Zerkling speed uh, does allow him to go for these side of, you know, these sort of annoyances. But in the end, it is the exact same build. So right now you can see Hellions being added on. Now Hellions with this build are obviously not a problem whatsoever. I mean, we're going up to four queens no matter what. Uh, we are going for a Roge Warren as well. So I know for a fact that Hellions are not really something to worry about. I do miss Micro right there. You can see I end up losing a queen for absolutely no reason because I had plenty uh, to deal with it. But right now I'm starting to make my final drones for the two bases. I'm starting to make my Roaches and very shortly I do want to start transitioning towards the third base as well. So I'm getting the plus one plus one. I'm making sure that I get my um, my my upgrades going right now, and I mainly want to producing roaches, or I mainly want to be producing roaches right now until these upgrades finish up. So if you have a quick look at them, all these three right here will finish up roughly around the same time. And until that very point, I'm not going to be leaving creep very far with my roaches at all. But once they finish up, I immediately want to try and do as much damage as I possibly can. Now early on, roaches are going to be pretty amazing, obviously against everything Terran has. Um, the only thing that I have to watch out for are things like, you guessed it, the Banshee. Banshee is going to be a little annoying, didn't really do any scouting whatsoever. Um, not to showcase this, but you know, just to mainly because I wasn't paying close attention to what was going on in this game, so I wasn't playing this perfect. Um, but you can see, even if you just get your... Um, your Overseer going and, you know, you get some spores as well. You will usually be able to deal with this just fine. And he actually ends up donating me uh, the Banshee, which is really, really nice for him. So I'm still making more and more Roaches. Got eight on the production tab right now as well. Got a whole bunch of them out already. And you can see I managed to hit 100 supply before um, 9 minutes and 30 seconds, which is definitely... It's not, it's not perfect execution, but it's pretty close to it. I do want to go for a third base now that I am moving out, and this is the timing that I think everyone can execute after a couple of attempts right here. Just simply practice this about a hundred times, you will be able to do this, um, I don't know, I know that most of you will probably only like four attempts, but still. I'm gonna try and move in right here, and the nice thing is, bunkers are definitely not a great way to defend against this push at all. You can basically just right click the bunker and it will always always start falling. Now keep in mind, there is a siege tank right there, my opponent is sort of aware of what's going on. There is a Banshee as well, but I just simply have a numbers advantage right now. Sometimes StarCraft 2 is nothing more but a, uh, a numbers advantage, and in the meantime, I'm getting my third base up, I am droning behind this, so I'm just trying to do maximum amount of damage. In most of the lower leagues, once again, you will be able to kill your opponent right here, because hey, there's just simply too much Zerk, uh, but I'm gonna start transitioning. I'm gonna go for the transition towards plus two, plus two, so I get plus two uh, Carapace as well as plus two Missile, and I'm gonna start adding on my Hydra then here as well. And I'm just trying to be annoying. I'm just trying to kill as many units as I possibly can. And this is the strength of Roaches. I mean, obviously, I know my opponent has a Banshee. And I know he even has a second Banshee. And I know that he went for Siege Tank. So technically, he's hard countering me, right? But the sheer amount of stuff that I had allowed me to kill 26 workers so far in this game. And obviously, if my opponent didn't lose that first Banshee on my side of the map, this would have looked a little bit differently. But it does showcase you that it's definitely very, very viable. So in the meantime, I am transitioning right now to a bunch of Hydralisk. Got 10 on the production tab right now. Uh, we'll need to make sure that I start the Hydralisk upgrade very shortly as well. And I'm going to transfer the extra workers that I made preemptively um, while I was pushing out towards the third base. Keep in mind, I am moving my queens over right now as well uh, because of Cloak. Cloak is kind of annoying. I didn't inject with these queens on purpose, which is another advantage of playing this style because, hey, you can actually save up for a couple of transducers and you can just simply kill a Banshee just like that. Hydras are out right now, gonna be sending those towards the main base, knowing that my opponent is very close um, towards it, and he's likely heading towards it, but we are all good to go. So keep in mind, from here on out, once again, plus two, plus two will be finishing up shortly, so I'm gonna start making non-stop amounts of units. Only just now getting the upgrades, which is not great, but I'm replacing the roaches that I lost earlier, and I'm just trying to deal with everything my opponent is throwing at me. Now, he actually ends up killing quite a substantial amount of workers himself, in total 13 went down, um, but we, we should be solid right here anyway. So I do end up cancelling the, um, the extra gases right there in the third base because I really don't need them. And I'm just simply gonna start producing more and more roaches, wait for my plus two plus two to finish, at which point I can once again do a second timing wave. So the first timing wave is right when plus one plus one and roach speed finish up. Second timing wave is right when uh, plus two plus two and a couple of hydras finish up. And then the third timing push uh, would be right when I get my uh, hive going and I will get a couple of um, Vipers going. So here you can see I'm already starting to that transition uh, towards the hive. I'm getting the infestation pit right now so I can transition towards it. 
For the most part, like I said, you will only need the very first timing wave, especially in the lower leagues. But the higher you climb, you're going to need more and more of these attack waves because your Terran players will become better and better. Uh, but right now, plus two, plus two finished up. So this is a great time for me to get moving across the map. Now, I'm going to be looking around right now. I'm assuming my opponent does have a third base up, which makes it only harder for him to defend. And here we go. I'm moving in. Now, usually these sort of fights are kind of scary for Zerg players, okay? Because you're not certain how these will go. But honestly, since I've been so aggressive early on, my opponent decided to cut out most of the upgrades early. This means that clicking on one of the Marines basically tells me the entire story, and I know right now that I can actually be taking on this fight. Plus two, plus two, Roach Hydra is extremely potent, and it can dish out plenty of damage. So right now you can see, even though that fight looked a little scary, um, if you just simply click on one of the Marines, you will notice very quickly that their upgrades are not as close to yours. So I'm gonna transition towards more and more roaches right now. I'm sort of smelling blood. I'm not certain if I can finish up the game. So just in case, I will be transitioning towards the hive right now, so I can get the vipers going. Vipers obviously would be used right now um, to add on the blinding cloud and to just ensure myself um, to take these like these fights even easier. I do know, however, that once my opponent gets up to plus three as plus three as well, I will not be able to finish this up. So I need to take at least a little bit of a risk right now and kill as much as I possibly can. And that's exactly what I'm doing right now. In total, we already see 41 workers go down, trying to target fire down a couple of these units as well, um, with my or a couple of these metafacts as well with my Hydra list. And I'm, send a, I'm gonna send a couple of roaches to watch his third base to kill whatever is left right there. So quick little game right here that showcases you that in fact. Roach Hydra is very viable at a higher level as well, so I would highly recommend you give the build order a try if you haven't already. I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, and I'll see you in the next one.